Day three was an early one. I had breakfast with Bud, checked my camera gear to make sure it was charged up, and I reviewed the traffic pattern content from the previous day. We drove to the airport and arrived to an amazing sunrise. No wonder so many people like to live in Arizona. We checked out FlightAware to see what the traffic was going to look like before my first hop in the front seat. After some unusual developments we learned about from the FAA, we went up and I had my first ride. Unfortunately, my head cam would not fit under Bud's flight cap, so I had to leave it on the ground. I also had a memory card failure on my chest mount and was not able to salvage the first flight. What I can tell you is that Bud walked me through some basic principles of ground handling, run-up settings, and we took off and performed climbs, descents, 90s, 180, and 360 degree turns, Dutch rolls, and he also showed me literally how sensitive the controls were. It was my first ever experience flying in an open cockpit, so that was an exhilarating experience to say the least. Word to the wise, if you ever plan on flying with Bud, be sure to wear plenty of layers. The desert climate can be pretty chilly up at 3,000 feet, and a puffy down jacket with a fleece jacket was just right to keep me comfortable. I want to make special note about Bud's training. When he says pay attention to the skid ball, he means it, and the size of his skid ball coordinator re-emphasizes this point. It was nice to have this instrument glaring me in the face, flying from the front seat. Okay, well the sun's coming out here just finished up our first session we focused on high-speed taxiing uh, staying on the rudder pedals uh, good focus on pressure versus abrupt movements very very good session uh, had ironically enough we had a little bit of an issue with um, the FAA this morning there was a news report that a whole bunch of the computer systems uh, were out of commission and so they were trying to repair those and so all the IFR flights out of, uh, out of Scottsdale got either put on hold or, or canceled, as I understand it. And so we got super lucky. Um, I couldn't believe it. And so there was just all VFR only. So we had basically, I mean, our traffic was cut down by like at least 50% compared to the other day. And so it just, uh, there was not hardly anything going. So we got a lot of good quality time. We're going to actually look at doing some more. Um, we're going to look at doing some more bounce and goes, touch and goes um, after some fuel, uh, both for the plane and for us as well. And then uh, grab some hydration and get back at it. So it's going to be a good time. And so here we go. The computer sounded like they got fixed for the IFR flights. So more business flights started taking off. After another short flight in the front seat and practicing the basics, Bud thought it would be a good idea to start getting me familiar with the back seat since flying from the front went well, so that also we can make the most of our time on field. There was not a full set of gauges in the front seat, so there was a lot more to pay attention to in the back seat. He walked me through all the flight procedures as well as hot starts. He warned that since we will be doing high speed taxis a lot, he showed me what settings he used to help reduce spark plug fouling in between taxis. After a day of good learning, I met up with some old family church friends I haven't seen in years over for some great Mexican food at a place called Barrio Queen. It was a great treat to catch up with them. Aviation in itself is amazing, but the even cooler element of aviation is it allowing you to build and catch up on amazing relationships. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.